Infantry used to be one of, if not the best troop type for free-to-play low spenders in Rise of Kingdoms, and over the years, we've really seen that change with all the new powerful Cav Commanders and all the new Archer Commanders releasing, pretty much completely outshining the Infantry meta. So today, I'll be talking about what Infantry need to come back from the really poor position they are in right now to possibly make them a viable troop choice for most free-to-play low spenders. I will of course go over the history of when they were extremely powerful and why they started to die off and what needs to be done to fix this so that they are at a good spot for the open field meta. If you are an infantry main or you're considering becoming one, this will definitely be quite the interesting video for you. So let's start off with really the history behind infantry because I feel it does give us a good look into what made them the meta. And when Rise of Kingdoms first released, Pretty much every single commander in the game was just from the gold keys. You wouldn't have seen any commanders past maybe Richard. I think he was the furthest in commander and he used to be in the gold keys. He was obviously countered by Song, who was also in gold keys. And then the cavalry commander at the time was Minamoto who was inside of the shop for your credit card. Now, here's where it gets a little bit interesting with infantry. When they released Richard, at the time, he was like by far and away the best commander, maybe second only to YSG, but at the time, if you had a Richard, you were like the top tier player because he was super tanky, people didn't care as much about save wound trades back then, it was more about winning whatever they were trying to win. So, Richard was extremely tanky back in the day, and he really took the spot as one of the number one commanders, especially since he could counter cavalry, which a lot of players were running cavalry back then. And most commanders would just get wrecked by a max Minamoto, but Richard could actually stand his ground against the Minamoto and tank his way through it. Also, Richard YSG was just a nutty combination back then. You'd be putting one of the most tanky commanders, well, the tankiest commander at the time, with the most glass cannon but highest DPS commander. And that was another reason people ran infantry. You could really just run YSG as a secondary and you didn't need to be an archer main. You just run infantry with a YSG and you're going to be looking at extremely tanky combinations like Charles Martel YSG and Richard YSG. Charles Martel YSG is still used as a city garrison for a lot of low spenders today. So it is really insane to think about how far infantry have come since then. Then to really top it all off, after all the second generation of commanders had released, we had Saladin and Khan and they were really good at the time. They were the meta. And then what happened was Lilith released themselves the next infantry, and they were Constantine, who was the most tanky commander. He basically overtook Richard. And then Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great shifted the meta so hard that people still used him today because back then, he was the best commander in the game by far. Anyone who had an Alexander the Great pretty much had the best commander in the game. And once again, he went with some of those really tanky commanders like Charles Martel and Richard. And Richard worked with YSG and Alex YSG was crazy good. And it still is nowadays in KVK Season 2. So Alex YSG completely shifted the meta once again. And so many players went and got infantry. They're just like, I'm going to be an infantry main because I'm going to get the best commanders in the game. Saladin was not even close to Alexander the Great's power. And we know that the next archers which released which were Tamiris, who was a complete whale-only commander, and Edward of Woodstock just really couldn't keep up against the Alex meta because he really was just that strong. Crazy instant damage, amazing shielding, so many stats. It was insane how powerful Alexander the Great really was, but this would only last temporarily. And I think you know nowadays, Alex is probably a bad investment because you only get him for one KVK, that being KVK Season 2. After Alexander the Great, Lilith was literally on a roll, and the next commanders they added... And the next commanders they added were Guan Yu and Leonidas. And once again, to add even more insults to every other troop, this combination was literally game-breaking. Only combination that ever came close to beating Guan Leo, like as in how much it broke the game, was Attila and Takeda, which literally had to be nerfed because it was impossible to kill. But besides Attila and Takeda, Guan Yu was probably the single best infantry commander and single best commander in the game for a while. I don't think there was a better commander until like Nevsky released, if I'm being honest. We had some really good standouts like XY came out and commanders like Trajan who served some unique value, but the best open field commander by like far and away was a Guan Yu. And the thing with Guan Yu was he didn't really need that high of an investment. Even when he first released, it was insane. You could run a Guan Yu with just his first skill maxed and he was literally still meta. He would beat most of the other commanders and he would just be bringing you so much value. So what would happen is a lot of players would just run infantry because they want Guan Yu. And then to top it off, 
they'd have an Alex from when they were in KVK season two to season three, which was pretty much what happened back then. You'd finish KVK one, you'd have a YSG at some point, and then you'd put him with your Alex. You got a great combination until you reached season of conquest, and then you'd pick up Guan and you'd run a Guan Alex, and it was insane back then. That was pretty much the account strategy. There's, there was pretty much no planning back then. It was just, all right, we know the best thing in the game is Guan Yu with Alex. I'm going to go do that. That was literally all you had to do back then. It was, it was pretty insane how good that truly was. And the thing that also made it even better was that Alexander the Great bought a lot of March speed and a lot of tanky stats, which Guan didn't have. And Guan's skill damage was crazy. Then for the players who wanted to put Alex elsewhere, which was certainly possible, like Alexander the Great could go with so many commanders. They just ran a Leonidas with Guan, which was so insane. It was probably, it was the best dueling march at the time. It had crazy AOE. Leonidas was stupidly tanky. Guan was doing the crazy damage and it was just so meta. It really made sense to invest in infantry back then for low spenders and free to plays because you just run Guan Yu and you're going to pretty much win. You don't, you don't get bad trades with Guan back then. Then the next commanders that came out were not, not nearly as good. They had Harold, who actually is a good commander, but he's, he's not on the level of Alexander the Great when Alex first released. Yes, I'd say Harold is better than Alex, but Alexander the Great, when he came out, was so, so good. And Guan Yu, once again, obviously destroys Harold. And Harold, he bought a lot for the infantry players, and he still did shift the meta quite a bit, working very well with Charles Martel, bringing Charles Martel back into the meta. But Harold just didn't bring as much as a Guan Yu and just didn't bring as much as an Alex. Most players just went and got XY, so really, Harold didn't get as much love as he should have, and that means a lot of players started to move a little bit towards a mixed mixed birdable, so half infantry, half cavalry, or half infantry, half archers, so you could see that it was kind of moving away from that, and since Alex YSG was starting to kind of lose its touch with all the newer commanders coming in and doing so much extra damage over the Alex YSG, a lot of players began to split their Alex and run Guan Yu Alex, and then also just put their YSG with one of the newer archers, and I think Nebu may have been out at the time, Ramses was certainly a great choice back then, so you could see that some of the infantry combinations were starting to lose their touch a bit, especially after Harold. Then came CJ, and I think with CJ also came Pakal, and they were just whale commanders if we're being realistic. CJ was fairly decent with Guan, but other than that, do you really see anyone run a CJ nowadays? Not really, just because CJ didn't perform that well. Like, honestly, compared to the other infantry, once again, he wasn't groundbreaking. He was decent, I don't get me wrong, I don't think CJ was a bad commander by any means. But for the most part, CJ just couldn't keep up with the meta. And then Pakal, really only whale commander. You have to get him from Mightiest Governor. Most players back then could not get a Mightiest Governor if they weren't spending money, especially since Rise of Kingdoms was a bigger, bigger game. So Pakal was, yes, a very, very good commander, but he only worked with Harold, which most players skipped. So they were like, I could go back and get Harold and then run Pakal and Harold, or I could just go and get some of the newer commanders, which are going to come out soon. Or wait for the next infantry. Then after Pakal and CJ came the meta of CPO. And CPO actually did bring infantry back into the game a bit. Not that they were losing at that point. Infantry was still like the top, top tier at that point. But they bought the infantry back into the game when they bought CPO. Like most players were infantry mains. They bought CPO in and everyone just went crazy for CPO. He has an amazing three target debuff, crazy damage factor. And he's like, in some ways, an Alexander the Great Prime, if we're being honest. Alexander the Great full of stats, lots of instant damage. CPO, not as much instant damage, but full of stats. He's got a shield, he's got AoE, he's got a debuff. So he was just such a good commander. He was the only of the, what I like to call, top, top tier commanders who released between Boudicca Prime, Nevsky, and CPO. He was the only one that had an AoE. So he definitely had an advantage over Nevsky and had an advantage over Boudicca Prime in that regard. And because of his AoE, a lot of players went and invested in him just for that AoE and his amazing debuff. So it definitely brought infantry back. And the best thing about CPO was he synergized really well with Guan Yu and really well with Alexander the Great. So a lot of players who had Alexander the Great and maybe benched him or had a Guan and they were like, Guan's not performing as good as they wanted to. They're probably running a Guan Leo and they were noticing like Leo isn't as tanky as he used to be. They just put the Guan with a CPO and that combination destroyed. Like it was the meta and it still is an extremely good combination nowadays. But the thing was... Guan was starting to lose his touch, especially after Boudicca Prime released. He'd been out for like two years at that point, and Boudicca Prime came out pretty much immune to silence, dealing crazy single target damage, high on stats. She was pretty much a different type of commander that we hadn't seen for archers. She was kind of like a Ramses Prime in the way that she dealt crazy single target damage and was extremely tanky. The other archers didn't do much to Guan. Like we had Nebu YSG who could barely beat a Guan Leo, 
And then we had Gilgamesh, who was not that amazing in 1v1s. We had Cyrus, who is once again not that amazing in 1v1s. So archers really weren't there to counter the infantry. And what happened was infantry just dominated. But after Boudicca Prime, Scipio, yeah, he was still very good, but Boudicca Prime could beat him. And I think that was balanced. I think that was something that needed to happen. But the reason Scipio was losing was because of Guan. So a lot of players needed a new secondary to Scipio. And the next commanders that released, being Sargon and Tarek, were not that. Sargon is really a whale in the infantry commander, unless you're running like two infantry marches, you really want his debuff. He isn't that amazing, let's be real. Compared to the other commanders that come out being Zul Lang and Giant Prime, he's not even close, like not even close. His damage is definitely lower than Zul Lang's and way lower than Giant Prime's as well. So you can see right there, straight off the bat, Sargon the Great, he was not the amazing commander that everyone wanted, especially for free-to-plays. He's great if you want to run an infantry murder ball and run two marches, and you have other marches in there, such as a Nevsky and a Boudicca. But for an infantry main who's trying to run mainly infantry, yeah, he's better than Guan, but he's not that much better, where I'd say that a lot of players who had Guan considered actually getting Sargon. And what they did instead was they moved on and they picked on some of the other commanders. Like, they got Nevsky and they got John Prime, an amazing combo. They went and they got Boudicca, and they put their YSG with Boudicca, since a lot of infantry mains had YSG since he was the meta back in the day. So what happened was infantry lost their touch, and especially from Sargon, they really, really lost their touch because he was not the commander players wanted. He brings a lot of value to a murder ball, but he doesn't bring the value that a lot of players wanted, being able to destroy the infantry commanders, like a giant prime, in my opinion, and by what I've seen, usually is going to be better than a Sargon and a CPO. So these commanders didn't really help bring back infantry, and Tariq, once again, Extremely good commander, but he's a rally mainly. Most players, just like Pakal, didn't really get Tarek because Tarek, yeah, he's really good, but I think you're only going to see maybe one in 10 infantry mains have a Tarek at a usable level and actually run him. Not because he's bad, but because he's a rally commander. Most players don't want to get a rally because rallies are very replaceable. They're all just damage, and Tarek's only got a rage reduction. That's his only utility besides damage. So a lot of players skip Tarek. And they, their guard starts to fall off when Zulang came out, especially recently, because Zulang once again has another type of silence immunity. I think this is Lilith's way of trying to push Guan out the meta to force players to actually invest in some of the newer infantry commanders. But the reason no one wants to do that is because the new infantry don't suit some players' playstyles. Some people don't really care that much about Sargon's debuff, especially if you're only running like two marches. He's not that amazing. Yeah, he's going to trade very good if it's like you're going to hit the opponents till you die. But for the most part, open field fighting... Sargon's not going to really beat as many commanders as you'd want. Yeah, he's got an amazing debuff. Yes, his skill damage is great if it's like a single target and you can stick to your enemy. But for the most part, he wasn't what players wanted. And I think that's really why infantry started to lose their touch, especially now in this meta. So, so what do we have to do to bring infantry back into at least a very usable spot? Because at the moment, they are very underwhelming. And Sargon, while being a very good commander, is pretty underwhelming compared to some of the other commanders. First of all, the first thing infantry need is a very, very tanky primary commander, which does high single target. For example, a commander such as Boudicca Prime, a commander like Nevsky. Nevsky is pretty much the best example of this, Nevsky and Boudicca Prime, being extremely high single target with crazy stats. And the reason I'd want this for infantry is because that would give CPO a great place to go. If you put CPO Prime behind a very tanky, one single target, high damage commander, you're going to have a really, really good march because CPO... Yeah, he's pretty tanky, and he's got some nice tanky stats. He's not as tanky as you would want, though. Like, a Boudicca Prime is going to munch through a CPO, especially a CPO Guan, very quickly. Guan doesn't have much defensive stats. Sargon, on the other hand, is a little bit more defensive, but even then, an Archer March is going to chew through it really quick. So what infantry need is either another AoE commander that's better than Guan, so it can deal out enough damage where you would say it's good enough, that even if it does go down, it's fine. Or they need a very tanky primary, similar to how Sargon was supposed to be, except their active skill can't be for the next five seconds you deal a specific amount of damage. It has to be you deal this damage on that turn. Next, we need the next infantry commanders especially to have some counter towards the cavalry. We can't have cavalry dominating the infantry as they are now. Nevsky and Joan is pretty much dominating everything with Boudicca and Zulang, while infantry are just left there pretty much in the dust. So... We need the cavalry commanders to either be slightly weaker against infantry, maybe they have some downside to infantry, like how a monetary takes an extra amount of damage from a, a cavalry, or we need the infantry to counter the, the next cavalry commanders. So that's what I would expect. I would expect the next cavs not to be amazing against infantry. Possibly they can obviously perform fairly decent against commanders like Guan, especially since 
since Lilith is trying to push Guan out of the meta. But for the most part, I want the next infantry to be able to counter cavalry and at least sustain themselves somewhat against the archers. What else would make infantry better? And I think the next thing to mention is Alexander the Great's relic. Alexander the Great has been alluded to have a relic for like three months now. Lilith actually confirmed it in one of their videos. I remember it way back when. And Alexander the Great's relic looked fairly decent. I can't remember the exact stats, but it looked like a nice boost to a commander who was decent at the time, but now Alexander the Great isn't that amazing. So I think that an Alexander the Great relic, bringing him up to the standard of the meta, would be really good. I think that it would bring back a lot of old infantry mains, or at least allow infantry mains to use a commander which either isn't performing as well or is pretty much benched. I know a lot of infantry mains just benching their Alex and going for commanders like CPO and Sargon over the Alex. But Alexander the Great is a commander so many players have, so I think that his relic is extremely important. Plus, it would bring the Alexander CPO combination back up to standard because while it does perform decently, it doesn't keep up with any of the meta combinations. It's going to get shredded by a Nevsky Jonas, it's going to get shredded by a Boudicca Zulang. So you'd really want that Alex relic to be something that is going to be very powerful for infantry, at least to bring him up to the meta so he can at least sustain himself against commanders such as Nevsky and Joan. So the other thing infantry need are good early game commanders. Richard in Season of Conquest is absolutely garbage. You don't see someone running a Richard going for good trades, they're just there to tank. Charles Martel is average at best, and you really want his expertise for his march speed. So most players are not going to expertise a Martel. He's a gold key commander. It's still expensive to expertise gold key commanders. He has a skill that's completely useless. But yeah, he's very good. 5-5-1-1 pre-season of conquest. Cracker at that point. But if you reach season of conquest, you're looking at a commander that unless you've expertised him, is not that amazing. And then the issue with Alexander the Great, while he used to be the meta for infantry, especially in the early game, is that... He can't keep up with the meta nowadays once you reach Season 3, and you get him halfway through Season 2, so you get to use him for his max potential for, what, 3 weeks, maybe, at the best, and at that point, you're gone to Season 3, why not just wait the 3 weeks, run whatever commanders you have for that time, once you hit Season 3, get the best commanders, whether that be CPO, whether it be Nevsky, whether it be Boudicca, Zulang, it doesn't matter, you just go for them. So what I think that infantry really need is to be brought back to Season 1. I think Alexander the Great needs to go to season one. That is what I would say to bring inventory back in the meta at some point, because at the moment, season one, if you want to actually get any commanders that will be good in season three, the only option for season one and two is really Isong, because you get him super early, you can use him in KVK one and get maximum value, you can use him in KVK two and get maximum value, and then he works very, very well with Boudicca Prime. Yeah, it's not the best combination, like it's going to lose to a Nevsky and Joan, but compared to an Alex and a CPO versus a Boudicca with a Zul Lang or a Boudicca with literally anything, it's going to perform better. That's why most players go for YSG over the Alexander the Great. The other option for Lilith is to make Pyrus, the new commander coming out, have an amazing relic. If Pyrus has a really, really top tier infantry relic, which I think infantry need because they don't have an amazing relic. They got Richard and they got Martel. And Martel's relic is the best of the two and it's not that amazing compared to the other ones. Then you would expect that Pyrus has a really good relic. And I'm talking similar to Minamoto's relic. Minamoto's relic is like 60% of total stats when double relic. Thutmose's relic is like 25% each of each stat, 25% attack and 20% health. So you'd want something like that on Pyrus. If Pyrus has those stats, he actually might become a very viable commander and you'd be able to access him from the start of the game. So he has the potential to bring some value back to infantry. And I think that another thing that infantry needed was definitely a really good early game commander. So let's hope either Pyrus fits that category or Alexander the Great gets brought back to KVK1, which I think honestly... Wouldn't even be that bad for the meta back then, bringing it a little bit more diversity. Now, overall, I think a lot of players can agree that infantry mains have kind of lost their touch compared to the new meta commanders. However, they still remain viable, but my hope is that infantry become actually very good in the meta once again. I want the next infantry commanders to be like the next archer commander, like when Zulang released. I want them to be like Nevsky and Joan. I want infantry to honestly be up there with the really, really strong commanders so that they at least have some time to shine. Like when Nevsky Joan first released, unbeatable. Now Zulang's out, he's unbeatable. The next commanders when they release, I'm sure they're going to be unbeatable. But infantry haven't really had that spurt of power for quite a while. So I'm saying infantry need that. And that's what I expect from the next commanders. Powerful commanders that actually keep up with the meta, that bring free-to-play players a lot of value, because that's what infantry were back in the day. They were the free-to-play troop, and I think that would be great for the Rise of Kingdoms meta again, at least bring back the value that they used to have. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, I want to ask you guys for your opinion. 
What do you think of infantry in the current meta? Are you enjoying them? Because I personally am not an infantry main, so I would be I would like to get a little bit more perspective on the current issue of infantry's power compared to other commanders. If you are an infantry main, let me know in the comments and tell me what your experience is with the new commanders, what you think Lilith should change. I am very interested in that. Now, I just want to say I thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.